talking on what I titled the power of fellowship. Philippians chapter 2. We want to read verses 1 and 2. Are we please read together? If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowel of mercy, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Hallelujah. Acts of Apostle chapter 2, verse 42. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Shall we please read together? And they continue steadfastly in the Apostles' doctrine, and fellowship, and the breaking of bread, and in prayer. The word fellowship was derived and coined out from the word called koinonia, K-O-I-N-O-N-I-A. Simply means holding something in common. And it is specifically used 20 times in New Testament. The word koinonia, the original word, simply means holding something in common. It is yours, it is mine. When you have that object, it will be said of you that you belong, or that object belongs to you, or belongs to me. From where we read in that act of the apostle, Bible says they have everything in common. No class, no race, no status. Because Bible says they will sell everything and bring it to the feet of the apostle. Bible says they eat together and they pray together. You know why? Because the food has opened them up. They have been in communion and the fellowship with the Father. Jesus sat there. He said, this is a new covenant. He said, this is my flesh. And after he did that, he declared the new kingdom unto them. Brethren, there is power in fellowship. What are we saying and what are we going to treat? I want to treat on three things. The essence of fellowship, the impact of fellowship, and the blessings of fellowship. Somebody say amen. amen. What is the essence of this fellowship? According to that Acts chapter 2 verse 42, and they commune steadfast, steadfast, which means it is not for treating. They put their mind to it calculatively and they make it a regular routine. And they continue steadfastly, they don't miss it. In the apostle doctrine, you know why they call it apostle doctrine? Before they call it apostle doctrine, the apostles themselves have been a disciple. All while they were with Jesus, they were referred to not 12 apostles, it is 12 disciples. They listen to the doctrine, coming together, fellowshipping together. Because they were with the doctrine of the apostle, the doctrine that they have learned, doctrine of the apostle is by experience. And after they did that, then in breaking of bread, and what's the doctrine? In prayer. There's power in fellowship. And the essence of this fellowship, it goes beyond the physical, it's about the spiritual. They started with the doctrine. And what is the doctrine? The rules, the principle, the rudiments of what the elders have learned from the feet of Jesus. Then they eat. And they didn't finish it there. Then they pray. They hear the doctrine. They socialize. If you want to see it, they see it that way. But the reason why you put the food in the middle, breaking of bread in the middle, is to open them up. Then they pray. Then you hold hands. Because you are not tired, you have the energy. And you know what? They didn't pray the prayer that God will not answer. They didn't pray amazed. They prayed the prayer that brings about testimonies. Number two, the impact of fellowship. When we know the essence that this fellowship is not just for social. Yes, I could be social. We're not saying this. Social aspect is wrong. But when we social, the purpose of social is to open us up. You will see some people, they go to socialize in the place of dining because they want to meet somebody that will give them a contract and will elevate them from the level that they are to the next level. Because in the place of dining, there is opening up. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Two are better than one. Leave it again. No matter your best, when someone joins you, your best can become better. Bible said Jesus was doing good and power. Good about doing good. He didn't do it by himself. Two are better than Two are better than, after two are better than one, what do you see in the front of one? Semicolon, what's the meaning of semicolon? Wait a minute, let me tell you the meaning. This is what I mean. Because two are better than one, to some, it could be anything. But the scripture is so funny that we explain what he had in mind before somebody twist it. Before an husband will tell his wife, I need to marry another one because Bible says two are better than one. So before you say that, before you misquote the scripture, I will say, listen, this is what I mean. What does it mean? Because they have a good, come on, because they have a good, you know, one of the rewards is that the Bible says one shall pursue how many? That's a brilliant achievement. One, pursue one thousand. Invest one thousand dollars. And you have ten thousand dollars in return. To yourself, you say, that is good. Oh, that is brilliant. But when it is two, to woman mathematics, two supposed to achieve how many? Two thousand. But God says, when it is two, it will achieve how many? Oh my God. See how fellowship is so important. See the power of fellowship. Two are better than one. Let's read now. 
Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Not one thousand, not two thousand, but ten thousand. Let's go now. Verse eight. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him. Hey, do you know the need of woe? Let's read again. Maybe I'm the one. Maybe it's my one. Maybe they, I'm just reading to your mouth. Let's see for verse eight again. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he has not another to help him up. May the Lord send help to you. That's some prayer, your own prayer alone cannot do it for you. You need a good prayer partner. What is going on now when they want to refer to some friend? You say friend in kind. Don't go for friend in kind. Because when the consequence comes, you both have it. One of the ways to have friend in kind is that when you know what they are doing, even though you are not doing it. You know he's cheating on his husband or cheating on his wife, but you smile to what he's doing. God sees the two of you as the same. He sees you as well as a cheater. You don't gossip, but you love to listen to gossip. You are swearing the man. You don't lie, but when you lie, you die. <laughs> oh, let me, my dear friend. You are a liar as well. A dead of a feather. Show me your friends. Oh, God is saying, when one fall in fellowship, the other one will lift him up. It is one to match you down. One to him that is alone. I can't take it. It is only me. This is my own idea. They know me to be. It's a word of falling, not a word of fellowship. God is saying, open it up. But be careful whom you open to. Pray. There's always somebody that God will link you up with. You know, I thought it's a good friend. That's why I opened my life. Did you pay before you choose that friend in the first instance? Did God lead you to it? If God had led you to the person that God led you, will not fail you. Power of fellowship. Impact us that when we fall, even before that's not that you are falling, someone is there to pick you up. So that will not be stampeded. Someone is ever there to pick you up. Husband, when you fall, don't be so arrogant. Let your wife pick you up spiritually. Hallelujah, somebody. Go to him that is alone when he falleth, for he has not another to help me. I pray for someone, God will send help to you. I say, God will send help to you. When we come together in fellowship, we amplify our impact for the kingdom of God. We amplify our impact for the kingdom of God. Through sheer experience, through prayer, your experience that God, why me, why me, the person beside you, it has happened to him before, and God has rescued the person. All what you need to do is to hear the testimony of that person, then you are rescued. Through sheer experience, prayer and resources, we can uplift and empower one another to live out our faith boldly. Boldly. To live out our faith boldly. That's the essence. That is the essence of fellowship. That's the impact that fellowship will give unto you. The power of fellowship. What's the first one? Can somebody remind me? The essence of fellowship. What's the second one? The impact of fellowship. And the third one is blessings of fellowship. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good work, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. If I tell you about the day that is approaching, you know that scripture also recognizes that there was some time of challenges. That sometimes like today, I see the old hell is losing against you. Now be time when you think, oh, why me God? And God is saying, not only you, you are suffering because you have been alone. You are suffering because you thought you can do it alone. You are suffering because you, you are thinking about your own mind, your own calculation. You are thinking about your own status alone. You put yourself above others. Oh, how don't you know that new level is new level? What you thought is the best is someone's experiences. Oh, you just experienced it. Someone has been there before. What is a blessing? According to this ebook that we have read, it urges us to consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. It will challenge us to love. Can somebody tell me what love means? Love simply means sacrifice. Love does what? Means sacrifice that you do because of somebody. And you don't show love. It's a misuse of word. What do you do about love? You give love. For God so much love the world. And he show his only begotten son. In John 3 16. For God so much love the world. And he show his only begotten son. What did he do? Yes. He gave. And what you give requires effort. What you give is a sacrifice. So when we fellowship, you will see people sacrificing for you. 